Hey guys, welcome back to Sex and Violence with Rebel Girl, where we interview top-level MMA fighters and other experts in their fields about love, dating, romance, and that all-too-taboo subject, sex. I'm your host, Ashley, Rebel Girl, Evan Smith. Now let's talk about sex and violence. What's up, all my naughty listeners? We are here again, deep diving into the lives of our guests. We scratch more than the surface, and we interview and dig deep, deep, deep for the dirt that you guys really want to know. Let's face it. We specialize in fighters, but we also bring you guests from all professions, backgrounds, and sexual preferences. We are back here at Black Belt Collective Krav Maga in Huntington Beach. They have opened their doors once again. We are in a a jam. We're looking for a new studio, but they have taken care of us so, so well. We've got state-of-the-art mics, the best sound equipment, and frankly, the vibe and the energy here from Abel, the owner, has been so welcoming. We don't know what we would do without them. So uh, give them a follow on Instagram. It's uh, at Black Belt Collective Krav Maga on Instagram. And then if you want to check out their website, it's www.huntingtonbeachselfdefense.com. By the way, did you guys know that mybookie.ag is the best in online gaming? It's where you should be placing your bets and you get a 50% bonus match on your first deposit with code REBELGIRL. This weekend, we can make some cash together, but please, honestly, don't pick my picks because even though I'm learning, you know, MMA is a crazy sport. There's, you know, um, upsets, there's eye pokes, there's illegal strikes. You just never know what's going to happen, and I just don't want to be responsible for your bank account. So uh, if you put some money in right now, you use code REBELGIRL. If you put $100 in, you get $50 extra. You put $1,000 in, you get $500 extra dollars. That's a lot of money. I mean, I know all you guys are thinking about that stimulus check that's coming. That's $1,400. Maybe you don't put the whole stimulus check to, uh, you know, in your MyBookie account, but, you know, a couple hundred bucks. And then you use code REBELGIRL, you get another, um, some more, you know, half of that, whatever you put in, to play. So if you want to play this weekend, we've got a card. It's a pretty good card. I'm looking at the fight lineup right here. Okay, we got Derek Brunson and Kevin Holland, the main event. I don't know too much about Kevin Holland. I I know he's been on a roll lately. He fought five times in 2020. And if you haven't seen him knock out Jacare from the ground, uh, I had to look up this clip. Me and my, my homie Brian were talking about this this morning. He is, Jacare is in Kevin Holland's guard, and he just throws up a haymaker and knocks him out off his back. It's unheard of, you know, especially Jacare, who's, you know, he's not a scrub. So Kevin Holland's got some massive power, you know, he's a good striker. And then Derek Brunson, he's just the, the well-known wrestler. So it's your traditional matchup, wrestler versus striker. Not going to bet on this. I just don't know. It could be anybody's fight. Co-main event, we got Gregor Gillespie versus Brad Riddell. Uh, I'm not going to lie. don't know too much about those guys. Uh, I do know about this next fight, though. Ty Tuviasa versus Don Tali Mayas, Tal Mayas, and Ty Tuviasa. This guy, I met him. Uh, they call him Bam Bam. He's the Australian, New Zealand. Um, he's always hanging out with uh, Tyson Pedro, the other um, I think he's a light heavyweight. But these guys are so, so funny. I met them back in I think like 2017 or 18 at the athlete retreat, and um, they're just two guys that you want to hang out with there if you don't uh, know it but um, Australians they drink beer out of a shoe after they win a fight as like a celebration and um, they call it a shoey and this guy does that after his fights he's just you know uh, a jolly guy very funny and and you know who doesn't want to see a big heavyweight guy drink beer out of a shoe so <laughs> I'm going for Ty Tuviasa there's a couple other good fights on the card Adrian Yanez versus Gustavo Lopez Gustavo Lopez went to Menlo College with me, and Carla Esparza, uh, Josh Emmett, a few other people. And let's see, who else? Oh, three women's fights. We got Cheyenne Baez versus Montserrat Ruiz. And I know this girl is, um, actually, we had Nick Delay Nick on last week, and this is her friend um, on Instagram. Her name is Conejo Mad. I think that's Mad Bunny or Mad Rabbit. But um, she took a short notice fight, and so I'm not going to go for her since it's Nick Delay's friend. Um, and then the other two girl fights are Marion Renault, who I fought before, versus Macy Chasson, and Julia Avila versus Julia 
Oh, God, I'm going to kill this girl's last name. Sorry. Uh, Stolarienko. She sounds Russian. <laughs> but uh, I think this is two Bantamweight fights. So that's my weight class. I'll be watching these like a hawk. Um, what else is going on with me? Back to training. Um, it's going to be, you know, slow road, but um, feels good to just be sore again. And sore I am. You know, I probably did like 10 squats and I'm dying today. But, um, you know, a few more months and then I'll be able to hit pads. And probably a few more months after that, I'll be back to, to grappling. And as I tell you every week, you know, the goal is to be back in the cage by the end of 2021. Um, I'll keep you guys updated. And other than that, it's been same, same here, except for California is open. I don't know if it's fully open, but restaurants and bars and uh, gyms and some beauty salons, they now are, you know, you can eat inside, normal. I know it's not completely normal, and I will still be uh, social distancing as much as possible, wearing our masks. I know some of you are probably starting to get vaccinations. Um, I'm fucking scared because, you know, they've probably just a conspiracy theory about, you know, if affects fertility and all that. And I don't even want kids, but I'm like, all right, if it does affect fertility, what else does it mess up? So I'm not some crazy person over here that's not going to get vaccinated. Um, but I, I do kind of want to be like, all right, I'm going to watch you guys. And if you guys grow a third arm, then I'm going to pull, pull back <laughs> from vaccination. But um, it's just a weird world, world we live in, right? So, you know, we're starting to get out of this crazy time, you know, crazy pandemic, and there will always be some kind of remnants going on. I feel like, you know, we'll probably have social distancing for, for a while, but it, it feels good to to get back to normal. And I hope you guys are, are thriving, you know, with whatever you got going on. We also have a new CBD sponsor called A Botanical Bloom. I'm very happy to have them on board. They are made with real CBD, not hemp seed oil. And all their products are lab tested and it's provided on their site. Actually, ev every product has a scannable barcode. So you can actually see the testing, the specific testing for each product, which is pretty cool. You know, it doesn't matter if you're a UFC athlete who gets randomly drug test, or if you just really care about what's going in your body, all, you know, all the products, um, have that label. They have lip balms, they have vapor rubs, tinctures, gummies, and this is something new. They have a CBD hand sanitizer. So right now we're in a pandemic. Everyone's using the hand sanitizer. It dries out your hands, right? And then you smell your hands and it's all smells like alcohol or, you know, whatever. This one moisturizes your hands and it smells like cucumber melon. So check it out, guys. It's uh, You can give them a follow at A Botanical Bloom on Facebook or at A Botanical Bloom on Instagram. And their website is www.abotanicalbloom.com. And you can use code AshleyMMA and you get 20% on all those products. I highly recommend the hand sanitizer. It's just, you know, you got to do it anyway. You might as well get one that smells good and makes your hands soft. So today's guest is a bare knuckle boxer who loves Krispy Kreme donuts and butt rubs. But who does it? <laughs> this 25-year-old single mother of two is also a baker, a barista, a keg cleaner at a brewery. When she's not grinding away at her nine to fives, wrestling with her young boys, and getting spontaneous tattoos, she's training nonstop. She brings a stacked resume of professional MMA, boxing, kickboxing, and bare knuckle boxing to the table. And with that background, you may expect to hear a hard-nosed, gritty interview, but prepare yourself to be surprised by a perky, playful, and goofy athlete. We talk about the pressures of OnlyFans, bisexual tendencies, dating after divorce, micro-penis horror stories, butthole etiquette, having her period on fight night, and so much more. Here is your guest, Tay Killer B Starling. Killer B Starling, thank you so much for joining us. How are you? I'm fantastic. Thanks for having me. How are you today? Uh, I'm doing good. You know, Thursdays are recording days and I've been wanting to get you on for a while. I've been following your bare knuckle career and um, you just seem like a cool girl. You seem like a girl I would hang out with if we lived close by, like you would be my friend. Just, <laughs> and it's not just the tattoos. It's so funny because like I've been obsessed with you forever <laughs> and like I've always been like, gosh, I just want to be best friends with her. So <laughs> it means a lot for you to have me on here and it's such an honor. So thank you. No problem. Okay. Well, let's get back to, let's get to uh, talking about the violence aspect of the podcast. Uh, you are a badass bare knuckle boxer, but you have also fought professionally, uh, professional boxing and MMA. So I want to know why'd you make the switch? Um, okay, so I have fought in all disciplines other than like karate and like 
I don't, I don't even know Kung Fu, but, um, I've done kickboxing, boxing, MMA, and just, there was always something missing. And it was kind of like, it felt like I was forcing myself to do those things. But when I saw bare knuckle first come about, I was like, Oh, that's my kind of fighting. Um, but my coach at the time just advised against it. He was like, you're crazy. If you want to do that, you're asking to get killed. And I'm like, no, like something about that just screams me. Cause I loved a brawl. Yeah. And I did every discipline and just every single thing, like it was fun, but it felt like something was missing. And when I went to bare knuckle and fought in February, like I was, I felt like I was home. I was like, I've been like, this is perfect. Perfect for me. Yeah, I so I watched that fight. Amazing fight. Congrats, by the way. Um, I was I didn't watch the whole card, but I was doing a you know a read up on the card, and they said that you and your opponent stole the show. It was just a bloody back and forth war. At one point, they thought you know you had her. She was, and then she just came back harder. And um, you guys got a, a crowd standing ovation. Tell me how that felt. It was wild because. I felt like I felt like I fought like shit, honestly. <laughs> like I was like, because it was so brutal and so hard. And like I look around and people were standing, and then I see like Shaquille O'Neal like standing. I'm like, oh wow, like it must have been like a pretty decent fight. <laughs> Shaq was there. So, yeah, Shaq was there. Anthony Pettis was there. Oh, cool. Like all these people that I didn't even know were there. Um, it was just really awesome. So. It was cool, I, but I really had no idea that it was a show ceiling performance. Like when the president, David Feldman, came up to me as I was standing in the ring and was like, you just got fight of the night, hands down, and I don't even need to see the rest of the card. Wow. Um, it was such a huge moment. And, you know, to be someone who, you know, faces a lot of adversity and stuff outside of the gym and like grinding for something that I see um, for my future was definitely really cool to have it just pay off. Yeah. So is bare knuckle similar to UFC where if you get a performance of the night or knockout of the night, do they give you extra money? Oh yeah. Which was really nice because it was very much so needed. My car like Aww. took a shit on me like the month before I left. Like I had to drive my dad's old beater truck that had like 300 something thousand miles on it. And my car was just <laughs> done for. So that bonus was like much needed. It's so crazy, right? We're, we We've chosen these professions where it's like where we put ourselves in those positions, right? Where we have to drive like a shit car and then we work our butts off. And then like when we win, we, you know, get a, you know, pay off our shit car or, or get a better car. Right. But it's like, we, we don't have to have these jobs. We could easily, you know, go get a nine to five and have some steady, you know, probably boring, but like more financially consistent job. But instead we're a little crazy and we choose to, yeah. <laughs> to live this life. But you know, when, when something like that happens, right. When you get performance of the night and a standing ovation, I feel like those are the moments where you're like, you look at everybody and you're like, this is why I choose this crazy profession. Exactly. Like I said, it was just that moment of like, I knew what I saw in myself that maybe other people didn't see. And like, I knew what I was working for and just to have it all pay off was yeah. like, hell yeah. yeah. <laughs> because there's so many doubts, right? Like, you know, yeah. it's a roller coaster of emotions. Like you and I both know and fighters, it, you know, from the minute you accept the contract, you're like, Oh, maybe. Oh, okay. Okay. And then, you know, you're training and then you have moments of like, Oh, I'm not ready. And then you, you know, you prepare and you get more ready and you feel more confident, but then the weight cut, you, you know, it's just a roller coaster. And then yeah. when, you, when you win, it's like, okay, like everything was worth it. Right. <laughs> yeah. And I, it's one of the things I feel like people don't get to really experience is like how, it's not just physical. It's not just training. It's emotional. It's mental. You've got a hundred people telling you you're an idiot and what are you doing this for? And like that just are trying to bring you down. And like that stuff really takes a toll on you. So yeah, to have that kind of moment happen. Like, I don't know who's telling you you're an idiot, but you should probably <laughs> distance yourself from that person. Yeah. Right. Right. That's definitely something I've done this year, uh, is, uh, you know, even if there's some people around me who's a little bit negative, I'm like, you know what? I'm only going to surround my pe myself with positive people, right? The people that are doing the things that I want to do or the people that, um, you know, are, have the same work ethic and that kind of thing. So I'm, I'm really proud of you. I, I've read about your story. I know that you're a single mom. And so I can only imagine that, that this win and all the media attention that you're getting is, is uh, making that single mom life easier. Yeah, it's awesome. It's so awesome. And thank you so much. Yeah, it's unreal because I tell people every single day, like being a mom, that my children are what I do it for. And like I 
the everyone's always like you want you want to make a lot of money right you want to get a world title right and I'm like what I really want is just to show my kids that if you go for your dreams and what you want to do like you can do anything you want you can achieve anything you want if you work hard and be a good person and go for it then you can do that and that's really all that I'm trying to achieve the other stuff that comes along with it is great but to me, this is like a mission for my kids to be like, yeah, your mom did it. Like, Oh yeah. I I'm sure if they don't, you know, they're, they're young right now, right? How old are they? Yeah. They're three and five. Yeah. Like I'm sure they're, you know, they don't really know exactly what's going on right now, but as soon as they get to that level where they realize like my mom is a badass, like I'm sure they're, and they're, maybe they're yeah. already proud of you at their little age, but you know, there's going to come a point when they're in that like preteen where they're like whoa my mom is a professional yeah. bare knuckle boxer like that she's yeah. not like other moms <laughs> I'm pretty sure my five-year-old's gone to school and been like better not mess with me because my mommy will beat you up <laughs> <laughs> <That's adorable>. yeah <laughs> so, so for your last fight was you know you, you just seemed even though you were hard on yourself you had a great performance you got the bonus is was there anything that didn't go your way during like maybe the, the weight cut or the fight camp Oh man, I had like, this is so much like being a woman. I don't think a lot of people see the true inside of being a woman and fighting. I started my period like the day before weigh-ins and it had to be like TMI, but like it had to be the absolute worst period I've ever had in my entire life of ever having periods. There's no TMI and... on this show. So just don't <laughs> hold know, back. I, was, okay? like, I don't even know why I said that, <laughs> yeah. but yeah. Yeah, I started my period and it was fucking awful oh. and it was the most miserable period I've ever had and that just like threw a wrench. My whole week was going like so amazing and then that happened and I was like, fuck. <laughs> so, uh, you know, it's weird because I'm a professional fighter. I've been fighting professionally since I was 23, but you know, weird, you know, TMI, but I don't give a fuck. <laughs> um, I don't have my, my physical period, right? Like I'm, I have hormones, I'm a woman and all that, but I haven't got my period in many, many years. So you know, it's a blessing because I don't have to deal with the, um, you know, the physical mess of the situation, right? Like, I'm sure I still retain yeah. water. I know I'm emotional, probably even more so than as someone who, you know, has their period, obviously. But in your experience, like, what are the biggest um, downfalls of being on your period? I mean, because, you know, the guys out there, um, they're like, oh, whatever, you know, so you, you, you bleed from your vagina, no big deal, right? But what does that entail? Like, what obstacles does that add to the already difficultness of cutting weight and preparing for the fight? Well, man, like, you, your body's retaining water. Like, you like you retain water, so you're trying to cut weight and make sure your weight's on point. And, and it was like, I had to calculate, like, okay, I weigh this much, but I just started my period, and I know that I gained this much during my period. And to make sure that my weight was going to be on point, um, while I was on my period. And then I'm a freaking psychopath on my period, like a psychopath. So I'm emotional and then I feel disgusting. So like I had weigh-ins the day after I started my period, which is like the worst day of my period. Oh, no. And I had like this hot little number like planned out and I still look good, but I didn't get to wear exactly what I wanted to. Cause I, I was like, listen, I'm going out here in a thong. My ass cheeks are about to be on full display. <laughs> and then my period was like, I don't fucking think so. Oh, God. And so <laughs> I had to like change that up. And then of course, like I'm going to fight and, um, I actually forgot my fucking tampons. Oh, so I had no. to have one of my, one of my, my coaches like go out and get me tampons. And his response is like, I'm like, you look, you got to go get me tampons right now. I forgot them. He's like, what flavor do you want? Oh my God. And he's like, <laughs> what fucking flavor do I want? I don't know. Just get something so that like, I'm not bleeding on myself. I mean, I was bleeding on myself in my fight, but like, Ugh. I was more worried. I didn't know that. <laughs> I was just like, I don't want to be, I don't want to be on TV with like a giant period stain and yeah. everybody like make that the meme. But obviously yeah, yeah. my fight, you wouldn't have seen it anyway. Yeah, It was a bloody fight regardless of what you had going on downstairs. Right. <laughs> Oh yeah. my God. Yeah. That's hilarious. And, and the thing is that, you know, the weight cut, the mental aspect of it, people always talk about breaking, right? Like, oh, so-and-so didn't make weight because he or she broke, right? Like it's, it's yeah. hard, you know, you get to this point where you're starving yourself, you know, if you do it right, you don't have to starve yourself. But, you know, we all know that even on the pro most professional level, UFC, 
um, there's still people that are starving themselves and doing it really unhealthy, oh, yeah. in an un- unhealthy way. So uh, it's just, God, it sucks so bad because it's like, it's already mentally and emotionally stressful, right? And then you throw in all our crazy period emotions. It's like, dude, I guarantee there's not, you know, a, a guy out there. Well, there's some tough guys, but most guys wouldn't be able to hack it. Going through the weight yeah. cut and the fight camp on your period, it, it's, it's rough. <laughs> and it's like the craziest thing is I don't know what kind of juju magic or whatever is going on in the world, but it seems to me like every single fucking time I fight, I have my period. It like never fails. I'm like, ah, good thing I know how to handle this now. Yeah. But it's just I mean, like I've always, it's always lined up. And I'm like, really? Yeah. yeah I, I, it probably maybe has something to do with like, you know, your hormones, like when you, when you get ready for a fight, you know, like, you know, your hormones yeah. go up, they go down. So I don't even know, you know, I'm not a doctor, but I just know it sucks. And it's something that men are very lucky they don't have to deal with when they're getting ready for their fights. Oh, absolutely. All right, guys, don't worry. We're, we're done talking about periods, but on a sexier note, you have an OnlyFans account. This is a big a hot topic right now with the female fighters specifically, because, you know, I don't, I don't know if there's a lot of guy fighters. I know um, bare knuckle boxer Tyler Goodjohn actually has one, <laughs> but, yeah. uh, but it's mainly female fighters that are utilizing this platform. What's been your experience um, using the platform? Is it good? Is it bad? Um, it's, it's got its good and it's bad um, because I, you know, being a single mom and working all the jobs I do, like I really use it for like an extra source of income. Like it's really helpful, but it's great to also be personable with fans or anybody but then you got like people don't realize like the people that message me for like personal content which like I'm really really careful with and like I don't I don't send things out I don't do nudes and things like that personally because one I'm a mom two I just I don't want it getting leaked like things like that but you know people don't realize they're messaging you asking you for butthole pictures, but (laughs) there's also a hundred other people messaging me, asking me for butthole pictures. And I'm just like, listen guys, I can't, I can't just show all you people my butthole. Okay. But isn't that, Um, (laughs) isn't that what what it is? It's like, you know, like, yeah, like for me, like I know a lot of fighters, like um, Jessica, I, I think she has it, but she's like, you're not going to see me naked. It's like, yeah, I put good stuff on there. Like my bare ass is on there. There's really risque, like super risque stuff on there. That I'm like, okay, I think this is personal, and you guys like get to pretty much see everything without seeing everything. Yeah. yeah um. Yeah. So it's it's that for me. Is it and is like it I don't called know, implied you... nude? That's what uh, we just learned with our last guest, Nick Dilly. She said it's called implied nude, where you know there maybe, we go. maybe like you're holding your nipples or like you know yeah like you're fully naked, but there's like a banana in front of your butt crack or something. Yeah. I don't know. You know. Yeah. I just thought about Austin Powers. <laughs> <laughs> no, but yeah. <laughs> uh, um, okay, so implied nude. That's cool. Like, I think all of the guys and girls too. Um, you know, whoever wants to to see your pictures, it's like whenever I have a guest that has an OnlyFans, the questions I get like, "What do we get when we when we subscribe to their OnlyFans?" And I'm like, uh, "Yeah, okay." Like, you, you definitely want- <laughs> get good stuff on my page. It's just like if you ask me for a picture of me. Like I had someone ask me for like a video of me naked shadow boxing, but showing my butthole. And I'm like, I have way too much shit going on in my day to like, and I like that to me, it makes me giggle. Like I understand, but I'm like, I just can't like think about myself, like getting butt ass naked, hitting pads and like bending over and showing my butthole and like taking it seriously. Yeah. Oh, you you know? know, it's so funny. You say that I was uh, scrolling through my Instagram last night and you know, I, I, I control the sex and violence Instagram myself. Some people may think that it's somebody else, but it's really me. And it's funny because I have my personal account and then I have the sex and violence account. And on the sex and violence account, I follow like, just like all like sexual accounts, like relationship stuff, right? And like a fighter girls and fighter guys. And I was scrolling and I was seeing like a lot of girls like doing their OnlyFans stuff. And I just had this like realization of like, okay, let's say I wanted to have an OnlyFans. Like I, I don't for like my own personal reasons. Like I'm super, yeah. super fucking shy and yada yada. There's a, there's a lot of reasons why I don't want to have one. But let's just say I, I wanted to have one. I'm like, I don't want to like do my makeup and then like get costumes ready and then like hold my selfie stick like and then like arch my back. I'm like, uh, yeah, that does not sound fun to me. Like I kind of want to like, like there's there's a lot of pressure on that because like I'm like um, at first I was doing it like before my bare knuckle fight, like 
oh, maybe I, like I can get some money and blah, blah, blah. Whoever wants to see it. I didn't really have a lot of followers. But once my following blew up, someone was like, you should post it. I bet you'd make some money. I'm like, yeah, absolutely. So I did. And now I feel like this constant pressure to post something every single day and like make sure I look hot and make sure that I'm like in the best lingerie. And I'm yeah. like, um, but you know, yeah, what? that's a lot of work. <laughs> you you know, like you and I both know it's like, it shouldn't be that right. It should be yeah. a fun, extra source of income where Jessica, I, um, actually the way she put it, it's just, um, was it Jessica, I or Jessica Penny, one of them, they both have one, but they were like, it's me like embracing my sexuality and like, feeling good about myself and just, you know, showing my sexuality the way that I want to. And I'm like, yeah, like, and that's why, like, just because I'm saying, like, I don't want one, I'm all for it, you know? Um, yeah. One question that does pop into my head, though, because you have a kid, I'm like, do you ever think, like, okay, like, in 10 years, you know, like, little, what's your, I don't, you know, like, little Johnny's friends could be like, yeah. hey, I saw your mom's butthole, you know? Or, well, not butthole, <laughs> but, like, you know, I saw her, like, implied nude pictures or whatever. Is that, like, yeah. does that ever pop into your head at all? Oh, absolutely. Like, I would be lying if I said it didn't, but <laughs> it's like, you know, um, mama got bills to pay. Yeah, yeah. Mom, you know yeah. those toys you like, but it's like, I don't, I, obviously, I don't want them to come out, and that might sound bad, but it's like, and I think of it this way, like, there's strippers, there's people who work in the sex industry and mm -hmm. things like that, that are moms, and like, you know what, like, I don't post anything, I mean, they might see, like, yeah, implied nudes, but <laughs> no butthole, but I'm like, ah, yeah. it's definitely a battle, like, I battle myself with, and I'm sure that I will get backlash, and I'm, I probably have gotten backlash on shit for yeah. um, doing it, but you, you know, know what, exactly, they're not paying my bills. <laughs> it's exactly what you said, that, yeah, exactly what you said, it's like, hey, you're not paying my bills, shut the fuck up, like, and that's, yeah. that's what it comes down to, and, you know, I, I think you're killing it, so but let's, let's dig, a, dig a little deeper, so, um, I want to know, how do you identify sexually? Are you straight, bi, pansexual, or asexual? I'm straight, um, but I've definitely had, like, lesbian tendencies. Like, and that's just, um, I don't mean that in, like, an offensive way if that, like, offends anybody. But, like, I'm straight. I've never been in a relationship with a girl. Um, but I've definitely made out with lots of girls. I've hooked up with girls. Um Especially, like, when I'm drinking, I love girls. If I am to, like, watch porn, I watch girls. Like, yeah. <laughs> it's, like, that inner, like, I love, I love me a bad bitch. Like, do you ever, like, oh, here, this is why, like, when I remember a couple years ago, like, I had done my little, like, hookup stage with girls when I was drinking. And then I'm, like, okay, I got to ask myself this deep question. Like, am I bisexual? And I just don't want to, like, admit it. Like, and then yeah. I'm, like, I realize, I'm, like, okay, I've never looked at a girl and said, Mm, like I want to do something sexual with her it's always been like oh her hair looks pretty oh my gosh like, yeah it's like I, I admire them but I don't desire them in a sexual way and I'm like all right like just because you like hook up with a girl when you're intoxicated doesn't mean you're secretly bisexual but you know do you, yeah would you ever have you ever like looked at a girl and been like oh like I would like to lick her box <laughs> you know like <laughs> do something physical with her um, I'd be lying if I said no, but it's always like, especially like when I drink alcohol, I'm like, oh, like I would, I would make out with her and I'm <laughs> going to do that. Like I've done that, but I've like, but I don't have a desire to like be romantically like in a relationship yeah. with a female just because like I'm fucking crazy and I don't know if I could handle another crazy female. <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> like, um, but I definitely like I appreciate women and like I think like I like I said I love a bad bitch and like I will I always if I see someone I will let them know that I think they're beautiful and if I'm drunk we might be making out like that. <laughs> oh yeah, you got to be careful. I uh, I'm very complimentary too to like other women and you know sometimes, yeah. sometimes guys but not really guys because guys will take like hey nice shoes as you want to fuck and you're like no man I just yeah. you have nice shoes <laughs> like but exactly yeah <laughs> but with women you know you know I'll compliment them and my boyfriend laughs at me because he's like you have no gaydar I'm like what do you mean and like at least you know him and I've been dating over a year now and at least three or four times I'm like talking to a girl and like I don't even drink anymore so it's not like I'm intoxicated I'm just friendly and complimentary and then like couple hours in she's like got her arm around me and I'm like in my head I'm like this is my new best friend and then my boyfriend's like yeah <laughs> she wants to lick your box and I'm like no and then like two more hours later she's like kissing me on the cheek and I'm like oh she wants my oh she box. wants to yeah. lick my box yeah <laughs> so I don't have a gaydar so I try to like even not be as complimentary but it sounds like yeah. when you drink you maybe you know want to just express that like you know 
exactly like, yeah, yeah every once in a while. but it's like me normal like me not normal sober like I'm like I appreciate females but I'm like no <laughs> but definitely when I drink I'm like let's make out like yeah. <laughs> So are you dating anybody right now? Are you single? Um, I am. I am dating. So yeah, I'm dating somebody. Mm, okay. What's that? What's going on there? Um, I don't really kiss and tell, but um, it's <laughs> my. I've been just like enjoying my life for what it is. Like I spent last year, um, getting a divorce and doing oh. all of that, and um, really finding myself. Okay. And, Okay. getting that together and yeah. so it's been really fun to just like enjoy another human like on my own terms and yeah. like good the way you. that I want to yeah so that's like that's been great good it's, um you know uh sounds like you know I don't want to dig too deep but how, how long did it take you um from your divorce to you know finalization whatever you call it uh to, to like yeah. jump back on the bandwagon jump back on the horse and, and date like did you take any downtime or did you just get right back right, right back out there <laughs> Um, I want to say right back out there. Like I definitely went right back out there and, um, you know, it was just like a year of like really figuring out like all the crazy shit and finding myself and what I wanted to do. And I think, um, after being married, I was kind of like trying to force myself to basically, uh, I don't want to say like be a servant, but I guess that's what I would say. Like I, I felt like I just had to do things. Like I just had to I needed, I needed love and I needed someone there and it's what I felt like. And then finally came a time, like a breaking point where I was like, okay, like I need to figure out being on my own and paying bills on my own and like just being by myself. And then once I figured that out, it just made it a lot sweeter to like do things on my own terms and not in like an emotionally traumatic state. Yeah. 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 So if that makes sense. No. Oh, it, it's good. I you said you jumped right back on the horse, but there was a year. Did you wait a year before you started dating? Is that what I'm understanding? Or no, you just... No, and it was, I was right into it. I was oh, right okay. into it, like, right after. And then, like, the it was just... It was good, and then it was bad, and then it was good. And, like, it just was a mess. Like, it's a whole... Like, I could see... I could probably take up the rest of your time telling this <laughs> long-ass story of everything, but... But we know, is we know, right? Where it's, it needs to be, yeah. All, you know, we we all have different stories, but for the most part, we we all kind of, when whether it's a divorce or a breakup, I feel like a, a lot of us, maybe not everybody, but a lot of us are like, oh no, who's going to love me now? Like, you know, we, yeah. we go to the extreme and then like someone comes along who's even better than the last person. You're like, oh, I am worthy of love. And it's just like this, you know, journey after you, after you, you know, end a relationship about realizing that you're good enough and, you know, everybody's not meant to be and, and whatnot. So you're on that, you're on that path and you found somebody yeah, right I now think, that... I think once you find your self-worth and you realize, like, I, I don't need a man, but I want a man, like, <laughs> yeah. that's a different, yeah, it's like a different kind of feeling. Yeah, I, I, I resonate with that. I was sober for four months um, and I was out of a relationship and I was like, oh, you know what? Like, this is great. This learning to be alone. Right. And appreciating your alone time, because I'm the kind of person, I don't know if you are like this as well. You kind of sound like it, but you hate to be alone. You know, I'm not yeah. used to oh, being yeah. alone. So it's like, I would jump from one relationship to the next, not working on myself. And then, you know, we do this weird transference, right. Where it's like, maybe you and your ex, you know, your, let's say your ex-husband had, um, physical violence in the relationship, right? Like, and just for example. Yeah. Um, and then the next boyfriend, you jump right into it and like, you know, he starts to yell at you and you, uh, you, you transfer the old relationship habits and so you think he's going to be violent and it's just, that's the exa the reason why we should take time in between relationships, right? To work on exactly. what we need to work on and, you know, and so that's something that I, I, I did for four months and that was very long for me and then I found my current partner and, you know, we're happy but, you know, four months, four months for me was... Um, was enough you know sometimes people take a year sometimes people like you jump right back into the relationship but you know if things are going good then you know that's all you can ask for right exactly exactly yeah just taking that time to really like uh focus on myself focus on what I wanted what I needed what I like I just had never spent that time alone I was married for a long time just did not take a pause yeah. and like I finally got to take that pause and it was like whoa like okay I really can do this on my fucking own yeah. like it's so and, but then but it's but it's better when you have somebody that like you can, know can help you on your journey you know you want exactly you don't want someone to do it for you but you want a support system right you're a team you exactly. know you and your partner should be a team they should, it should make you better and and I remember being you know in relationships in the past and and 
and just carrying the fucking team and not really realizing like, hey, I need better teammates. <laughs> and uh, yeah, you yeah. Know, <laughs> and I think, you know, like you have this realization when you, you know, break up or get divorced and it's like you, you, you're your own team, but it's so much better to have a, a good teammate on your team, right? Yeah, especially when, like, yeah, when you have someone that realizes, like, we got to do this together, like, and then, like, makes you realize, like, we're doing this together and, like, really supports that. It makes a huge difference. Yeah. So I won't, I won't dive t- too deep into this relationship. It sounds like it's new. But what about, like, in the past? Can I ask about any, um, you know, dating experiences? Like, uh, what's, let's, let's talk about kind of, like, one of your worst dating experiences. Does one come to mind where you're just like, oh, Oh, God. gosh. <laughs> <laughs> Um, I, there was like a phase when I was like a teenager, I was like 18, 19 and like, um, doing things that I was being bad. This was more of like a dating, like single doing wild shit. Like I, cause I've never really, I've always been in like committed relationships. So this is a good story from like, like a, a just a nightmare date from when I was being like in my hoe phase. <laughs> yeah. Um, <laughs> Yeah, we I all like went to, <laughs> Yeah. I was going on a blind date um that my sister set me up on and I was like in Florida on vacation. She's like, Yeah, this guy wants to meet you and take you out, and blah blah blah. I'm like, Okay. So we go and this guy's like completely uninterested, like fucking just leaves me leaves me hanging in this bar and like I, I was underage drinking. I wasn't I shouldn't have been doing that, but I was at a bar and they were serving me drinks and um this guy leaves me hanging and then this other guy comes up and he's like whoa like spitting all this game to me I'm like hell yeah like this guy's amazing he like bought me drinks so of course at like 18 19 I'm like whoa this is like the greatest thing in the world <laughs> yeah um this man's buying me drinks yeah. like I never had a man buy me a drink so our, our I standards like super special our standards are very low at 18 <laughs> <laughs> I'm like oh man I want to marry him um he like Anyways, this guy's spitting mad game. He's awesome, buying me drinks. And in my head, I'm, I made the decision. I'm like, all right, I'm going to fuck this guy. Like, if he wants to hook up with me, like, I'm going to hook up with him. Mm-hmm. And uh, long story short, the night goes on, and we end up going back to my sister's. And I'm like, yeah, like, I want you. And this guy's like, well, I have something to tell you. And I'm like, oh, okay, cool. And he's like, I'm a virgin. I'm like, oh, oh, like, that's so, that's so sweet. Like, you know, I don't mind. Like, if you want me to take your virginity, like, I will absolutely give it to you right <laughs> I will now. Do you like, this I will, favor. <laughs> yeah, like, I, I have no problems doing that. And then all of a sudden he's like, okay. And he, like, <laughs> we go to hook up and this man has, like, a fucking micro penis. Like, no fucking joke, the smallest dick I've ever seen. And, like, I, I'm not, like, shaming people with small penises, but it was just, like, oh, oh man. okay like, like this is why you're a virgin and like I I don't know what I'm supposed to do with this like it oh, was just kind of like no. the most like the it was the biggest just let down because like I had gotten gassed up all night long <laughs> and like my whole like I was so ready for this man and oh. then it was just like Wow. Okay. The breaks. So, the breaks. Plan. I, I had to Google. I had to Google what exactly a micro penis is. I mean, I've heard of this, and I do know yeah. it's a thing. I, I remember. I remember actually uh, looking into it because I was watching this episode of. Oh my god! With with uh, her name is Jessica J. Uh, New girl. New girl. Um, yeah. Zoe Deschanel. Um, so this episode of New Girl and this like hot guy like they go back to their uh, her place and and he like takes his pants before he takes his pants off he's like I have to tell you I have a micro penis and she's like I'm I'm sure it's not that bad and then like you see it and you're like. Oh, that's a thing. And so oh, yeah. <laughs> I Googled it and it says, fun fact, an adult penis is considered abnormally small if it measures less than three inches, about eight centimeters when erect. And okay. Like, yeah. So I absolutely saw a micro penis like right in front of my face. Like, oh, right in front man. Of, and like, you know, I'm like, I was younger and I like seen the thing and I'm like, this is not real life. And like, I, I'm again, like, I'm really not trying to just like shame people because like they have no control over that. Yeah, but of course. that was my experience of like, you know, just expecting this like big bang at the end of my night. <laughs> and it was like, it was like a firework that like was a dud. Okay. Yeah. Well, like went out. I was like, fuck. Okay. So did you guys do like, you know, like mouth stuff or like hand stuff? Like, <laughs> like, did you just like, no, I be like, I'm out of here. Like, it was really, like, sad because, like, the guy kind of, like, knew, like, Aww. she's not interested. And I was just like, I'm sorry. Like, 
I, I now I'm like really like fucking up because I'm like I'll never tell anybody about this <laughs> your micro penis and here I am years later like Aww. I saw a baby dick like oh my god <laughs> oh, <baby dick. laughs> well I mean it's not like you're telling his name and you're being really nice yeah. about it but oh I was like I was like well did you like you know like wiggle it around or something <laughs> nothing like I don't know sure oh, god. I just stared at it and was like, this is no real life right now. Like, you know, um, but dating, oh. like I've, I've definitely had my share of dating, like just douchebags and like just normal, like, uh, you know, and like another thing that's really hard with dating for me is, um, people who can handle the fight game. Can or can't? Can and can't like both. Like that's, it's like, I've had a really hard time, like, my marriage, like, um, me and my ex-husband, we are on pretty good terms, but that's one of the things that was hard in our marriage was, like, he just couldn't understand, like, why I felt the way I did about fighting, and then, like, and I don't think men realize, like, it's a lot, like, so many people are like, I can handle that, and then, like, I'm, like, no, I'm really, like, a fucking alpha bitch, like, you yeah. gotta be able to out-alpha me, basically. It's weird, because you have to, like, you know, I feel I feel the same way, but it's also, if you get another, like, if you, let's say you're an alpha, you, well, you are an alpha female, right, and then you date yeah. another alpha male, that doesn't necessarily, it's not always the recipe for, um, good, yeah, yeah, for good, because if they're not sensitive to your extreme emotional, um, you know, ups and downs in, of the fight camp roller co coaster, then it's just like butting heads constantly. So, you know, you and I and a lot of other women are who are fighters are like looking for this like perfect mate of like alpha male, but also like sensitive, loving kind. And yeah. It's just like that's really fucking hard to find, you know? Yeah, um, so exactly. I, I get you on that. So, so you're saying that being a fighter and your your career has has definitely gotten in the way of your your romance life. Yeah, like it, it, I've had. I've, um, I think I've found the balance now of someone who definitely understands it, but I've definitely had a people not understand it. And it's been, that's been a big battle because I've always said like fighting will be here before you and fighting will be here after you. So, you know, we got to find our happy medium of yeah. like how this is going to work. It's hard you know? because I think, um, you know, at least for the people that I know, men and women, you tend to want someone who understands. So you end up dating someone in your career, you know, and maybe they're in the same organization or maybe they're in the same gym. And it's just like, you know, then if it doesn't work out, this is a whole slew of problems. Right. But at the end of the day, like, yeah. your heart is in the right place. You just want to find love and be happy. But it's like, ah, fuck. Now I got to see this guy on the other side of the <laughs> mat every yeah. day. So like, that's a, a common problem. But OK, so you date, you know, or you used to date, um, you know, in person, like, you know, traditional old school. But I feel like nowadays. Yeah all about the dms right uh slide yeah. into the dms so do you guys especially now that you're getting this great media attention do you guys slide into your dms trying to hit on you that way yeah absolutely and like my response to that is i've always just been like especially when like the dm thing like started picking up i was like i don't want to be a hundred years old and like telling my grandchildren like i met him <laughs> he slid into my dms and said he wanted to see my butthole <laughs> like, like that's like not the story i want yeah um and i'm like such a romantic like i i live for the see you in person and you look into my eyes and we just know that we're the one like i want something like that i don't want i don't want like oh I, he slid in my dms and told me some fucking lame ass joke but i mean i do have a lot of people slide in my dms and i understand like that's people saying and that's like what's going on nowadays that's how people it's it's a it's it's not as hard people like, like you said like you're shy people are shy um and it's a lot easier to go online and be like just say whatever you want and not really have to give a fuck oh i'm not shy um, i'm definitely not shy. <laughs> i don't but, think um, i would have a podcast talking about buttholes if i was shy yeah, but um yeah. but you know I, I i think that it's just a different a different culture it's a different time right like we didn't you know there never used to be technology and social media so you had to go up to a girl and ask her out or a boy and, and ask him out and now it's just you know the net, you know, what's generation X or what? What's the new generation Z? Y? I don't even oh, know. Oh gosh, one of the alphabet, one of the letters in the alphabet. Z? Oh, so at generation Z, this these guys with all the fucking, you know, like all they know <laughs> is Tinder and Bumble and the the, the dating apps, and so it's like, ah, oh, it's like, it's disappointing, really, you know, because I feel yeah. like it it takes so much more for a man to walk up to a woman or a woman to walk up to a man, you know, because even that, yeah. right? That's 
that's going against like traditional gender roles or like, oh, you know, you're an aggressive female if you go up and you ask a guy out. And some men are like, exactly. they, they don't like that. And I'm like, oh, are you fucking kidding me? Like, I'm doing all the work for you. <laughs> yeah. Like, yeah, I couldn't get any easier. But like, it's wild to me because as young as I am, like, I've never once been on Tinder or anything like that. Like, there's been points where I've like wanted to get on there just to like, see the craziness yeah, because I, like, I just lo- <laughs> yeah like I just like seeing like the wild stuff that people put in their bios and like oh, yeah. I'm I, I love to like he- people watch so um yeah that was like the only reason I ever would have possibly wanted to have one but other than that like I couldn't possibly fathom like a man just like not, like wooing me over the internet I yeah. just don't yeah and, 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 you know, just like regular text messages, uh, sometimes things get misconstrued in, in technology, yeah. right? Wow. Well, uh, so I've been asking this question lately, um, and I love it because I'm like, oh, God, it's, it's, I'm 33, and you're 25? Mm-hmm. 25. So, you know, what, would, what do you put up, what did you used to put up when, we, with, uh, when you were younger, like in the dating scene, that you wouldn't put up with now? Like, I know back in the day for me, it was like, oh, he doesn't have to have a job. It's okay. You know, or he doesn't have to have a car. And it's just like, now I'm like, I really set the bar real low back then, you know? And so now yeah. I've got like these prerequisites, right? For my partner and like finally found this great guy, but it's like, I had to raise the bar. So did you, yeah. was there ever a time in your life where you're like, wow, like I really was uh slim pickings there? <laughs> yeah. Um, you know, the, the, and like, this is like, so like you said earlier, like, oh, wow, we have our standards set pretty low, like, trying to drink at, young, at a young age. Like, yeah. um, I always look for somebody who has a sense of humor. Mm-hmm. And, like, I just can't, like, someone's got to have, like, they got to be outgoing. Um, I've been with someone who wasn't outgoing. And, like, that, I mean, like, obviously I want, I need a man that's stable in himself. But, like, personality trait-wise and, like, things like that, like, I need someone who can take a joke and, like, make, like, I've always said I want to be with somebody who could make me laugh at least once a day. I want someone who can just make me really laugh once a day, even on like my worst day and um, just an outgoing personality. I've been with someone in a serious relationship that just like could not even say hi to a stranger. And that like really bothered me. Yeah. Cause I'm, I'm the opposite. I'm super outgoing. Like I don't, I'm not scared to talk to people or go up and speak to people because it's, I just think that's just, a good way of living. Yeah. Um, so that to me, like I can't be with someone who just has absolutely no personality or outgoingness about them. Yeah. I think, you know, especially for, for men and women who do the, the sport that we do, the, the career that we've chosen, it's so intense, right? There's so much like, it just intensity, right? And it's just like hard training and, you know, now you got to recover and you got to get good night. So if you can find someone that like, just jokes around and like makes your life like not so serious. It's, it's amazing. Yeah, and absolutely. It doesn't know, like I've, I've realized um, over the years, it, it doesn't necessarily mean that this person has to be like, Oh, that's the funny guy. Right. Because when yeah. you have a connection with someone. What I realize is, you know, maybe they're not like, you know, you wouldn't describe the person as a funny person, but when you have that connection, you guys start to have your inside jokes, right? That like, you'll just be talking and then you'll start laughing and like, no one else really knows what the fuck is going on, but you guys got your inside joke. And to me, that's like, okay, maybe my partner's not like the funny guy, but we make each other laugh, right? We have our inside jokes. And that's really important to me too. As long as I'm laughing. (laughs) Yeah. yeah. Like, I just want to laugh. That's the one thing I ask for. Yeah, me and uh, me and my boyfriend were last night. I said something. We we're joking, like it wasn't like evil or anything like that. But we're I looked at him and I was like, I think having I think the goal or like the point of having a best friend is just um, laughing at the same stuff and like or like hating the same people or you know what I mean? Like yeah, oh absolutely. <laughs> and we were just like joking about the same stuff. But all right, yeah, I want to know about your sex life. I you have this wild demeanor about you, and I'm just like. What is Tay like in bed? What what's Ooh. something that you're all about? Oh, um, I need a I need a man that eats ass, like <laughs> eats ass. That's like, oh, the, you know what? You just asked me a question. Like, what is something like? No, you that that would be like that can tie into that. I need a man that eats ass. Okay, um, okay. <laughs> uh, <laughs> so okay, let's say uh, Tay, if we're you know I'm a guy and we start dating and we're hooking up and the sex is good, but then you're like, you know, hey you know, do this. And he's like, no, that's a complete deal breaker. 
I mean, like, I don't want to go, like, I know, I know myself, like, I really, I don't feel like I ask for too much, um, <laughs> but I, I'm not like, I want you to pee on me, like, or like something like that, like, that's something that usually is like more so like, a, ah, I think that's a boundary, like, <laughs> but um, I, I want people, like, I definitely want my partner comfortable in their sexuality, but like, if I ask something that to me, I, I don't know, if they really feel uncomfortable, like, I wouldn't pressure them, but I'd be like, huh, <laughs> yeah, well, you know, eat my ass. <laughs> like, I mean, on. you know what you want, and that's important, right? You know, you gotta know what you want in life, like, and if you want, yeah. if you want your partner to eat your ass, and he's not down, you know, it's probably not gonna work out because let's face yeah. it, you know, you you said you were in a long marriage, so how many times, you know, did you have a sexual experience, and you know, maybe if your partner was meeting your needs, it's like okay, things are good, but year after year if you want something physically and that person's not giving it to you, it's just, I feel like it's always going to be missing. So it's, that's why I have this podcast. It's where I, I try to normalize talking about our sexual preferences and, and the things that we're into and our kinks, right? Like it's not a big deal. Yeah. It's just fucking sex. Like you're not, you know, yeah. you're, you're loving another person and there's not, you know, even if you do want to be peed on, Hey, that's your kink. You yeah, know? Like exactly. that's on you. So I think it's good that you know exactly what you want. Yeah. And like, that's the thing is like, you know, if you're someone who wants to pee on or get peed on, like, I think you deserve to find somebody that wants to pee on you or will let you pee on them, <laughs> vice versa. <laughs> um, but yeah, like it's, I feel like if you guys can't meet in like a certain area aspect of what you want, like it's, it makes it hard okay, because I you're like, I, kinda, I can't go use without getting my ass ate, like, you know? Yeah, I, I, I felt the same way about, you know, other sexual acts. And I'm like, okay, well, if I don't do this with my boyfriend, is he going to go out there and find yeah. it? You know, and that's not a good way of thinking, right? Because you want to, like, trust your partner and know that they're not with you just for, for sex, right? Like, either yeah. it's, it's give and take in, in the, you know, relationship, whether it's the you know, physical aspect, the emotional aspect, or the relationship responsibilities and all that. But, okay, I'm thinking... Now, you know, my boyfriend is going to shoot me, but he's, I'm, I'm, if I asked that guy to, to lick any part of my body, he would, you know, like line up with a bell on, like he's, <laughs> he's down. But like, I always wonder, cause it's, you know, you're, you're a light skinned blonde girl, but I'm half Mexican. So it's difficult to get, you know, that area, um, uh, hairless. Right. And like, even lately, yeah. I've been like, <laughs> is Nair okay for your butthole? Like, and I, then, <laughs> and I told my boyfriend, he's like, babe, no, don't do that. And I'm like, well, I'm just like, I want, you know, it's not that like, I'm shy. I'm like, I, I would feel more comfortable with him doing that to me. If like things were like spick and span though, you know? Yeah. And I'm like, what do you, what do you do? Like, do you have to get your butthole waxed? You know, if that's something that you're related yeah. to, are you self, are you self-conscious about how it looks back there? Um, yeah. Like, because like I've seen porn where, porn stars have like the pinkest buttholes yeah. and I'm like my why does my butthole not look like that what do I do to get it to look like that and then like I never thought about like shaving my ass crack and like like you said like I have blonde hair but still like there's still hair there so it's like um yeah like so I've never like I don't know I think about it now and it's like I mean there was a point where I was on Amazon looking up like anal bleach and I'm like um <laughs> but it's like but I'm like okay um well, yeah, but I'm like, as long as this thing is clean and shaved, like I'm good. Yeah. I, have you ever done that? The anal bleach? I, I know. No, honestly, I, know, I haven't. I know the porn stars do it and stuff. And I'm just like, is it like normal when you bleach your, your regular hair? Uh, like, do you have to like, cause you're bleaching like the skin, right? Like I, I yeah. don't know. Maybe I should ask the next porn star that comes on the show, but it's like, how often do you have to bleach your butthole if that's something that How you do? How do we bleach our asshole? Yeah, yeah like, I I want to know. So, if, so, like, if you get to ask someone, I want to know. Um, All right. All right. I, like, looked into it, and it was just, like, so many mixed reviews of, like, this doesn't work or this works. And, like, um, I don't know. It was, like, eye lightning cream, but put it on your butthole. And I'm, like, I don't feel safe doing that. <laughs> like, yeah. You know? I, I don't know. Like, there's waxing, shave, there's, there's – and then I don't – I don't know if there's nair for your butthole, but they should make that if that's if it's not. And you a know thing. what's hilarious know. is like I've never used nair until like a couple weeks ago, and I was like putting it on my legs. I'm like, I can't wait to put this on my asshole, and I'm like looking at the bottle, and it was like, do not put on your asshole, your nipples, or your <laughs> vagina. And I was like, damn it! Like I was ready to put that on my butthole. I was um, too. <laughs> I was too. And like honestly, like I read the bottle, and then I was like, okay, like. But then I was like, well, it's just you know, like 
our personality. Well, just a little bit. Exactly. Yeah. I was like, but what if I just do a tester? And then like my boyfriend's like, like he's like, I, I don't, you're crazy. He's like, I wouldn't want my butthole to be on fire. And I'm like, okay, you're right. And so like yeah. he talked me out of that. I'm like, thank you, babe. <laughs> that's uh, why you're like, yeah you gotta have the relationship where someone's the gas and the brakes and like vice versa for each other i think he was just like um impressed at the lengths that i would go for him to make sure that yeah yeah you know and i'm like i don't think he would trim his butthole if i was going down there you know? <laughs> yeah. like, but who knows you know i've never asked him either okay so um i always ask this question it's Sometimes it's interesting, sometimes it's kind of boring, but how did you learn about sex growing up? Did you have like a parent have the birds and the bees talk? Was it like, uh, for me, it was like all the kids around the neighborhood were like, you know, talking about like, oh, this is a French kid. Oh, this is a hand job, you know, and I learned yeah. that on the streets, if you will. <laughs> yeah, it's funny because like my dad was kind of a player when he was younger. And like, I remember like I constantly walked in on my dad having sex Oh, oh. or like, con yeah, like just... And it was never, like, his fault. It was always, like, mine. Like, I'd wake up in the middle of the night and, like, just come busting in his room. And, like, I just, like, was under the impression that it was two people laying in bed together naked. And I never knew that it was, like, things going in holes and things like that. So um, one of my cousins, like, I was telling her, she asked me, she was, like, uh, she was a teenager. She was, like, 13 or 14, and I was younger, and she was, like, do you know what sex is? And like me being the little kid, I'm like, Oh, S E X. Like I would always yeah, say yeah, S E X. Yeah, S E X. <laughs> um, I'm like, Oh no, what's S E X. And she was like telling me. And I remember that it just like traumatized me. Cause like the way she said it, like she was a teenager. So she was being kind of a punk about it. And I'm Graphic. like, mm -hmm. Yeah, I'm like, no, no, that's what my dad's been doing this whole time. Oh my god! And like, and I remember it traumatized me, and then I was over it. And but it was, it was kind of nice. Like I didn't have to have like a, I mean, I didn't have an awkward talk. I already knew. And then like once I knew, I was like, okay, maybe I shouldn't go busting up in my dad's room at like one in the morning because I want water or like something like that. You or know? maybe your dad needs to buy a lock for his door. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. Put a sock and tell you not, you know, hey, yeah. and the socks here, knock or don't, I don't, I don't know. In. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, so okay, you know, we are these alpha females. I don't know if you get this all the time. It's like you know, talking about sex, like, oh, I bet you're so dominant, and I'm like, mm, to be honest, like, I kind of, you know, we we're tough all day, and I'm like, at the end of the day, when it's sexy time, I kind of just want to be submissive you know every once in a while I want to be more dominant but like I really yeah feel that role reversal in my life when it comes to like intimacy like how how are you how do you feel like do you feel like ah, you're alpha male alpha female all the time or do you kind of let your partner take over in bed um I like to be dominated like I want to be dominated and like told what to do and things like that and but then I do have like my moments where I'm like oh I'm the captain now <laughs> yeah. and like <laughs> Um, so it's kind of both, but like, if you ask me, like, it definitely, like, I like to be told what to do. Like, I want, I like someone who is very vocal and like tells me what to do, what they want, how to do it. And I'm like, okay, yes. Mm -hmm. Like that's, I love that. Um, because I'm a big old baby and I, like, I just want to, like, I, I like being told what to do. Yeah. I like, I like, that's where I want the alpha man to kick in, you know, like one of my funniest, one of the funniest memes I've seen is like, don't tell me what to do. Unless we're naked together. And I'm like, oh, yeah. Yeah, exactly. Me too. <laughs> yeah, that's how I feel. So what, what are, what's a time in your life or, like, what's something that makes you feel super sexy? Like, maybe, you know, for me, I'll give you an example. Um, you know, I, I like to be, you know, submissive for the most part. But, like, I, I tend to be extra, I feel sexy, like, right before my fight, right? Where you're just, like, the leanest. Yeah. You know, not like there's, like, a, there's a point of diminishing return, right? Where we're, like, cutting weight. And we're just like kind of sucked up and I'm like, I got no energy. But like right before you start that weight cut and you're just in fight camp and you just tummy and your abs are on fleek, right? I'm like, oh, yeah, that's when I'm like, all right, you lay down. I'm taking over. <laughs> like, Yeah, yeah, I agree. And like and then for me, like on fight related, like when I just like have because I love makeup, like I'm all about makeup, doing my beating my face, hair on point. So, like, when there's a day where, like, my makeup's just fucking phenomenal and my hair's phenomenal, I'm, like, I'm ready to fuck some shit up. Because <laughs> it just makes me feel like, like, it makes me feel like my little inner porn star is, like, unlocked. And I'm, like, yes, I'm ready to fucking do all the weird shit yeah. and, like, be the captain. <laughs> yeah, I, oh God, I suck so bad at makeup. Like, I, it took me, like, 20 years to learn how to do, like, 
winged eyeliner and like red lips and I'm like don't ask me to do anything else like I'm good <laughs> you know like oh my god no you're like stunning no. you're like oh. <laughs> thank you girl uh but yeah I, I do have to get my makeup done sometimes for like photo shoots and I'm like okay I'm gonna take all these pictures do this photo shoot and then I gotta bang my boyfriend tonight because this is the best it ever gets <laughs> you know <laughs> yeah 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 that's like that's like when I feel the sexiest I'm like oh when I like everything is just all on point I'm like oh yeah oh yeah so it is time for lightning sex round are you ready I am always ready. All right. Lightning sex round, guys. If you don't know, we do rapid fire one question or one phrase, and Tay is going to say very fast, yes or no. Are you ready? I'm ready. All right. Lightning sex round. Do you dirty talk in bed? Yes. Spank or like to be spanked? Uh, be spanked. Fighting? Yes. Choking? Yes. Threesomes? Depends. <laughs> uh, do you watch porn? Yes. Any foot fetish? No. Bod <laughs> bodily fluid fetish? No. Do you like bondage, like ropes or blindfolds? Yes. Role playing? Yes. Any butt stuff on you or a partner? Yes. Do you use sex toys? Yes. <laughs> Have you ever been to a sex club? No. Or a swinger party? No. And are you a lingerie lover? Yes, absolutely. That was a lot of yeses, Tay. <laughs> I know. I was like, wait, hold on a second. Like, I was like, awesome. oh. I was like thinking in my head, like, I'm a freak. Okay. <laughs> oh, it's all right. That's this is the kind of guess we want to have on. <laughs> all right, good job. So, uh, next up, we got fuck, marry, kill. I'm very excited about this game for you. Sometimes I don't want to put our guest in a compromising position, right? Where they have yeah. to play this game with somebody they might know in person. But I, I asked you ahead of time. I'm like. Can we do this? And you were like, let's fucking do it. So I'm very yeah. excited. Okay. So uh, fuck, Mary kill. We're doing the bare knuckle boxing edition. Are you ready? I am so ready. Okay. You have to choose between these three guys, who you want to fuck, who you want to marry, and who you want to kill. We've got Tyler Goodjohn, who was actually a guest here on Sex and Violence, bare knuckle boxer. Uh, Brandon Lambert, also a bare knuckle boxer. And finally, we got Chris Lieben, former UFC fighter, also a bare knuckle boxer now. Uh, who you want to fuck? Who you want to marry? Who you want to kill? Oh my gosh! Okay, um, <laughs> I want to kill Tyler Goodjohn. Oh, and I, that's no, that's no. I'm, I'm so sorry, Tyler Goodjohn. You got to go. Um, <laughs> just and I would, um, I would fuck Brandon Lambert, and I would kill. I mean, I would marry Chris Lieben because Chris Lieben just seems like such a good wholesome man. Like I would marry him. <laughs> um, <laughs> and I would fuck Brandon Lambert. He's like got that bad boy. Everybody hates him. Thing going yeah. for him and like him and Tyler Goodjohn like I met Brandon Lambert in person he's been nothing but super super nice to me and so sweet and so kind um so yeah nice okay what, what's the beef with Tyler Goodjohn and Brandon Lambert I mean if we're gossiping <laughs> you know I um I don't really know I think it just was like online Instagram bullshit and uh, Brandon Lambert is just very vocal and it's kind of like that Conor McGregor factor to me is like how I see it like he you know he's talking his shit and it gets him noticed and people are talking about him and buzzing about him but like he like he he's a good fighter he believes in himself and he's got all of that going for him he's got everything going for him so fuck it like why not like I'm not that kind of fighter I can't talk shit because I'm just like such a lover um but <laughs> Um, but him, like, he's got that factor of, like, that, and I think it's just, like, it's funny because, like, I've met him in person, and I know, like, how nice and how sweet he is, and, um, to see people online, like, that don't even know him that are, like, fuck you, I'm, like, but he's really nice, I promise, like. Yeah, but you and I both know that we're in a sport that's this weird mix of, 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 of real athleticism, but also entertainment, right, like, more yeah a little WWE-ish sometimes, right? But like, yeah. you know, we're actually getting into a fight and, you know, it's not scripted and we, we don't know the outcome, right? So, yeah, and it's just, it's weird because that trash talk sells and, and I'm with you. I'm exactly the same way. It's like, all right, that works for some people, but that's not my thing. Plus, yeah, you better back up your trash talk. Otherwise you look like an idiot, right? Yeah, So, but it's like one of those things, like, like you said, so WWE-ish that like sometimes you don't know if it's real or fake. And sometimes it is fucking real. And sometimes you're like, oh, I really thought you guys hated each other. But it was like, not real. Oh, like yeah. it's So that's the hard thing. But I really do believe that Tyler and Brandon hate each other, like with a 
with a passion. <laughs> maybe we'll have Tyler back on, or maybe we'll have the Brandon, Brandon guy, Brandon Lambert on. Tyler. And I and like I love Tyler Good John, but I'm sorry, I have to kill you. That's right. You have to go, <laughs> Tyler. All right. So now we have fan questions. I'm very excited about this next one. <laughs> uh, okay, at, I'm ready. At she fights two wants to know. It's a two part question. A would you rather have a one night stand with Brian Ortega from the UFC in the White House? <laughs> Or <laughs> so random. I know <laughs> Brian Ortega in the White House, or a threesome with Rachel Oscovich and Valley Lareda in a one-star motel. Oh God! Hilarious. I'm question. gonna say Brian <laughs> Brian Ortega in the White House, but like Rachel Oscovich, kind of hard to resist. Like, um, but Brian Ortega in the White House. Why yeah. not? And Valerie Lareda too. Like, she's yeah, like, like she's yeah. Like how how much like more voluptuous both. can you get? I'm like I feel and like, like perfect. I feel like every I see time... her training and I'm like, what the fuck? I literally look like Gollum like when I'm done training, and then I see <laughs> I her and she looks like I know. a freaking million dollars. I know. I'm the same way. I'm like, yeah. and I like it's funny because I'm not old, but like you know she's in her young, early twenties, and I'm just like, wow, it's a young girl thing. I'm like too old for that shit. <laughs> <laughs> yeah i look all busted no, when i train. they're both perfect they're both perfect but definitely i would take brian ortega in the white house okay okay first of all like i don't know if it's brian ortega or the white house because like, i've never been in the white house <laughs> <laughs> all right the uh, part b for the same person um at she fights too which is a great page to follow guys uh they basically just showcase all female fighters and whether it's, you know, um, bare knuckle boxing or MMA or even WWE and um, karate sometimes. It's pretty cool. Yeah. Uh, part B. So spend three years in prison or never win another fight ever again. Oh, gosh, I'm going to prison. At least I could, like, probably get some fights in there and, like, <laughs> tr still train, you know? Like, yeah. I could be prepared when I get out. I feel like, you know, that might be some kind of intense fight camp. So I'd go to prison and then come out, like, a fucking, I don't even know. Yeah. For sure. Okay. <laughs> um, let's see. This is kind of an interesting one. At Rolling W Master Guns, have you ever dated a guy who enjoyed pain? Um... Yeah, <laughs> I suppose, like, I've never had anybody, like, tell me to, like, beat the shit out of them or, like, twist their nipples or stomp their balls or anything <laughs> like that, um, um, but I feel like they've, I've been with freaks that, like, you know, like a norm, like, I don't even want to say normal, that's not the word, um, but, like, the rough stuff, but yeah. I've never been with someone that's, like, really genuinely been, like, stomp out my balls, and, like, I will love that. Yeah, that's, that's another level. <laughs> yeah. Okay, let's see. Uh, we got at Liam underscore am underscore I, I, I. What's it like to be a single mother and a fighter when you have to commit a lot of time to fight camps? It's really hard, but um, I always um, – I, I follow a schedule. Like, I make sure I follow my schedule. I make sure that all my time is getting put where it needs to be, which my children come first and foremost at all times. Um, but I also communicate with them like, Hey, mommy's doing this. And like, if like when I leave for fights, like, cause they're so young right now, I want them to be able to decide to go to fights. So, um, I communicate with them and let them know. And like, if I'm gone on a fight trip, I really just tell them like where I'm going, what's going on. I, even though they're three and five, I constantly communicate with them, but shit, like I have mental breakdowns all the fucking time because I'm like, I don't even know how I'm like doing this all, but but I've always said like where there's a will, there's a way. And I just make it work. I could not give you the recipe exactly. It's just like, I know what I want and I'm going to make it happen and make it happen to the best of my ability. So yeah. that's, it's a struggle though. It is definitely a struggle. You said it yourself. You're like, I don't even know how I'm doing it, but, but you, but you're doing it. And that's, you know, that's the thing, right? Is that yeah? people always ask me, they're like, what advice would you give to future fighters or this? And I'm like, it doesn't matter if it's a boy or if it's a girl, if you're just starting fighting or if you've been doing it for a few years, I always say the same thing. The difference between me and maybe like, you know, a dozen other fighters who, who didn't make it was that I always found a way to keep going, right? So I've never had kids, but like I've had money problems, relationship problems, family issues, you know, like health issues, injuries, you know, whatever it is, it's going to happen and you have to yeah. find a way to overcome it, you know? And that's sometimes yep. easier for other people. You know, maybe they have some financial support. Sometimes other people don't. You know, like I said, I can't fucking imagine what it's like to have two young boys. You know, you're super mom, and I look up to you in that regard. I'm like, wow, like, that's amazing. Oh, so, thank you, yeah. You know, whatever, just keep doing it's what like you're doing. One of the, it's just like one of those things, like, I'm, I 
tell people this all the time. Like everything looks fucking great on social media. Like that's the thing about social media is like nobody posts. Like, I mean, some people do, but like you don't really get to see the bad side. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, you guys have no idea. Like it is like some days I wake up and I feel like I'm scraping myself out of bed and like trying to just like glue the pieces together like more times than like me just waking up and feeling good and ready to go. Yeah. Um, so yeah, it's definitely rough, but like we said, like when you have something like your mindset to something goals and things you want to do, you make it happen. And that's just all there is to it. You're, you're doing the damn thing, Tay. And I'm oh, thank you, so, boo. so, so happy to have you on the show. I think you're a great fucking role model for, for anyone, you know, male or female, you know, you, you went through a divorce, you said, fuck it, you made your debut, you know, you got this performance of the night, you're training for your next fight. By the way, you know, before we go, who do you want to fight next? I want to fight whoever they put me with. Like, see, this is where, like, the shit talking comes. Like, mm -hmm. actually, um, I would love to fight Jenny Savage again because I fought her in MMA. Um, she's one of those people that um, is the bad guy. Uh, and she can go, she constantly is like, or was constantly posting about me on social media. Um, I just ignore that shit. Like I don't, I don't have time to argue with people on Instagram. I like, you guys know my schedule, you yeah. kind of know my schedule. Yeah. It's like for me to sit and take the time to like argue on Instagram, I'm not going to do it. Yeah. Um, but I would like to fight her again just because like I fought her. Um, I broke my nose. It was a loss. And like, it was just like, it's one of those things that like, I want to avenge, um, when the time is right. Yeah. But I have all the respect in the world for Jenny Savage, but also at the same time, like, I kind of want to get gangster with Jenny. Yeah. Um, but um, Cassie Robb was actually talking about coming to Bare Knuckle, and oh. if she comes, I would love to do that. I actually really, really like Cassie Robb. Cool. Um, I think it would be a great matchup. She's tough as nails. Uh, but basically, like, my thing is just, like, whatever they tell me to do, I'll do. And, like, I don't really want to be like, fuck this bitch and fuck that bitch. Like, I just, I don't, I can't. You like in my heart. You don't have to. Yeah. I, I also think that there's a way to to promote yourself and boost yourself With, up in a, yeah. in a in a classy way and instead of using like a trash talking kind of like you know disrespectful way. You know, you can just fucking own yeah. it. Just you know, no, like I'm, I'm fucking better than this bitch. You know, like she, we're both out here trying to make our money, but at the end of the day, I'm just better than her. It's just all about how you put yeah. yourself out there, right? But I like I, we're not in there baking cookies together, obviously. But also at the same time, it's like. You're working for something. I'm working for something. We're going to have to get in there. Like, whatever they tell us to do is what's going to have to happen. So, like, we're going to fight, and then it's going to be over, and then we're going to be on to the next thing. So, like, what's the point of me wasting my energy and being like, I fucking hate you? Like, yeah. I don't know you. Yeah. I don't personally know you. So, like, but if people get personal, like, I definitely have some gangster in me. So Yeah, and you know just as well as I do that if you uh, – if you don't respect a fighter inside the cage and you let your guard down for some whatever reason, you know, uh, you're gonna get fucked up. So I yeah, respect all absolutely. my opponents. Maybe that's why I don't trash talk. Trash talk. Wow, trash talk. <laughs> Freudian slip. <laughs> uh, you know, maybe yeah. that's why I don't trash talk is because I'm like, you know what? Deep down, I, I know this girl's working just as hard as I am for the exact same exactly. Thing. But um, exactly. All right, Tay. What? Where can we? Where can we find you on all the social medias? Twitter, Instagram, Snapchat. Oh, oh OnlyFans. OnlyFans. My OnlyFans is OnlyFans.com slash B. My Instagram is at TayWStarling. Um, I've got Facebook, Taylor Starling. I haven't met my friend limit on there yet, so if anybody wants to add me on Facebook, that's fine. Um, I don't do Twitter. I, like, I did when I was, like, younger, when Twitter first was, like, really popping. Yeah. But, from like, I just haven't, like... I know I should probably make one, but the energy of doing that and like trying to build followers, I'm like, yeah, yeah you guys just follow me on Instagram. <laughs> now there's TikTok, um, right? Yeah, there's TikTok. I have a TikTok. I don't even know my name on TikTok because it kind of <laughs> like generated like a thing. Um, but yeah, Instagram, Facebook, follow me, add me. And thank you so much for having me on here. And I'm so thankful. Thank you, Tay. We're going to keep watching you. And uh, yeah, maybe we'll have you on again in the future. Absolutely. Thank you so much, Ashley. I appreciate your time. All right. Talk to you soon. Bye. Bye. Okay, guys. That was a very, very fun episode where we talked about lots of uh, lots of things that normally don't get talked about. So thank you, Tay. That was very fun. And I think she just has the right game plan in general. You know, she she recognizes that you're never going to make everybody happy, but, you know, she's just going to focus on herself and do what makes her happy. She said something that really resonates. It's, you know, no one's going to pay your bills but you, right? So at the end of the day, you got to do what you got to do. 
And, you know, I, I think it's great that she's that open with what she wants in the bedroom and in life. And it's hard to say those kind of things, right? You know, talk about our kinks, talk about what we want. And, uh, you know, sex, it's a very vulnerable act. But, you know, we've got to be brave enough to do what makes us happy, even if it does make us a little uncomfortable at times. Um, and maybe that's having a conversation about the kinks with your partner, or maybe that's just realizing that the partner that you're with maybe isn't for you. But whatever it is, speaking up, in my opinion, will always be worth it. And that's why we have these talks here on Sex and Violence with Rebel Girl. So guys, that's it. I hope you enjoyed another show. Uh, we'll see you next week. And remember, be kind, be grateful, but don't take shit from anyone. Special thank you for tuning in and for all your fan questions. Hope you guys enjoyed this episode. Thank you to audio engineer DJ Zoll at DJ Zoll, Tomorrow Kids Studio which is not where we're at. We are at Black Belt Collective in Huntington Beach, uh, at Black Belt Krav Maga, producer Nate Jackson at Nature Domus, and sound tech at It's Goodman. Thank you, Tony. Uh, you can also find us on Instagram at Sex and Violence with Rebel Girl and myself at Ashley M. May. And lastly, please, guys, if you like this podcast, do us a favor. Go rate and review us on Apple or Spotify or wherever else you listen. This podcast will always be free, but the more reviews we get, the more uh, we go up in the charts, which means we can you know, crank out more episodes for you guys. So subscribe to this podcast and tune in next week to hear more tales of sex and violence.